Okay, so I think we have a, a few people on the line. Um, um, so I think um, I can look at the agenda. So we have, um, I guess the first item on the agenda is uh, Harbor graduation graduation review process or progress. Uh, uh, so, Michael, you want to on this or? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I had a question first. So, last time we met, uh, we talked about. I think you uh, muted. I can hear him. It says I'm not. Can you guys not hear me? Oh, no, sorry. I can hear Go ahead. you. Go ahead. I... Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah sorry about that. <laughs> so um, the last time we met, we talked about um, the possibility of uh, a few folks um, looking into Harbor and reading some of our due diligence document. Um, yeah. The, you know, a, a couple of possible uh, uh, were either Quinton or Diane. Um, did anybody get a chance to look at our extensive documentation on that? Uh, I I briefly took a look at it. Uh, uh, so I need to go uh, and, and review it in more detail. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, the, the SIG is actually, I, I mean, we talked about the SIG being new. And so the, the SIG moved and we're actually, um, uh, kind of getting more critical mass. Uh, the we had a TOC uh, Tuesday, and uh, Diane was approved as uh, Fedima. There's two Dianes. There's Diane Mueller and there's Diane mm -hmm. Fedima. So Diane Fedima is the the next co-chair. So okay. I, she's not here, but um, yeah, I'll sync up with her and see if we can uh, get uh, more. Uh, uh, eyes on your document. Uh, so, okay. yeah, and uh, we also have a tech lead. Uh, uh, Klaus is, is our uh, one of our tech leads, and, and we're looking at uh, adding a couple more. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so once we have that critical mass, we'll be able to kind of move forward with the, uh, more the review process. Uh, so, I, I, uh, there's also a check, right? So, uh, for SIG runtime. Uh, so I think uh, that's also very helpful, and then we can, you know, make our uh, comments there. And it, 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 I think it's bullet points, and we can, you know, say whether you know we think it's okay or not. Uh, but overall, I mean, I think it, it, it looks good from from our side. I mean, uh, you know, keep in mind that you know we usually make a recommendation based on the due diligence, and then later on it goes to the TOC for a vote. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the process that the TOC wanted to follow as well. Uh, is kind of see your what your recommendation is, and then from there on, uh, uh, see see how it goes. Yeah. So yeah, so that's the status. Uh, so I saw that you pinged uh, Quentin uh, on the yeah. Slack, and then you didn't get a reply. Uh, yeah. So I I don't know what Quentin is exactly. I think he's a uh, I mean, he's done a lot of work on the uh, TOC and, and standing up the SIG runtimes. Mm -hmm. I think he might have taken a little bit of a step back uh, in okay. last month. Uh, I think he got a new job. Uh, he started working at Facebook. So, um, okay. yeah, so he's been kind of, he, he might have been, uh, uh, you know, off the grid for a little while. And so, okay. By the uh, way, we so forgot, that, are, are you recording this meeting? I don't yes. see a recording. Yes. But, okay. Yes, it's really just recording. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, I mean, let me get started then, and uh, and see where we go from there. So I'm gonna walk you all through uh, the presentation that I did also for CNCF. Um, okay. Cool. Great. The, yeah. the, con yeah. the content doesn't really change <laughs> between uh, the TLC and, and here. Some of the numbers will change, but but overall, uh, I wanted to uh, to kind of show you where where Harbor is today. Obviously, okay, we want this to be interactive. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to stop and ask. Mm -hmm. So um, today, our well, the TOC sponsor was Joe Beda when we started this. 
obviously now Joe is not a member of the TOC anymore, so um, I don't know if that will change. And Zhang Li was uh, responsible for the technical due diligence. Um, he said uh, in his latest comment that uh, it's solid, so I'm, I'm assuming that's another word for he's good with it. Oh, great. So, and, uh, so uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, yeah, so he's no longer in the TOC, so I would actually ask Amy, uh, who will be, you know, maybe the next person to, you know, will be, become a TOC sponsor. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't, yeah, I talked to Amy on Monday. We don't need to worry about that yet. Uh, like, uh, the it, it's, it's in the review process, so we don't need another sponsor right now. Okay. All it needs is once you guys review it, we'll figure out if it's approved or not. <laughs> um, right. Like the sponsorship is needed so you can bring it into the table so the TOC can do the due diligence. Uh, later on, it's just all about the vote. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have one sponsor or three. If nobody votes for it, you, you won't get in. You got it, yeah. Um, so let's take a look at Harbor uh, in a nutshell. So, so Harbor is an open source container image registry. We aspire to be the repository for all of your cloud native artifacts that includes images, home charts, and all OCI compliant files. And we secure all these artifacts with role-based access control. We enable scanning uh, images for vulnerabilities, and then we can sign images as trusted. Our mission is to be the most secure, performant, scalable, and available cloud native repository for Kubernetes. And that is why we're actually adding all that work around OCI compliance and Harbor 2.0 that will ship uh, at the time of Cubicon EU this year will have full support for OCI. Mm -hmm. Our pillars are around security and compliance, performance, interoperability, and providing a consistent image management for Kubernetes. A lot of folks are asking, why do you want to even run your own registry? And you know, what, what are some of the advantages that Harbor brings into this ecosystem and into this space? First one is security and compliance. Harbor provides a comprehensive policy that enables IT operators and administrators to define it and be enforced. We allow you to have your registry and data ownership because it's a private uh, package solution. And then we we'll provide identity federation with built-in multi-tenancy. So that gives you, from a feature standpoint, vulnerability scanning, we have CVE exceptions, we have image signing, quotas, retention policies, we have full support for federated identity with YDC and LDAP integration, along with role-based access control and CLI secrets that basically make use of that identity federation. And then we enable you to have multi-tenancy from a project isolation perspective. We allow you to deploy on any infrastructure using the assets that you own today, or you can go buy new assets or deploy it in the public cloud. So private, public, hosted, and the edge are all scenarios that Harbor supports. We enable you to enforce data locality because you can deploy Harbor on any hardware you own. And then we're both Kubernetes and Docker compliant. We have full support for scalability and control. You get to have control access over the artifacts that you own, and you can replicate resources based on your business needs. Actually, we enable you to replicate Harbor artifacts to Harbor, Docker Registry, Docker Hub, Huawei Cloud, AWS, Azure, GCP, Alibaba Cloud, and many others. So we enable you to centrally store all your assets into Harbor and then create a hub and spoke model where those resources can be replicated to other uh, control points near where your applications will run. Why is that important? Harbor can enforce your comprehensive security policy. So can scan your images, can sign them, we can make sure everything's good. And then when you replicate them to the outside uh, clouds or to the edge, they can just be consumed without having to be rescanned. And that works, by the way, that scenario is really big for the edge, where you can actually scan all your images in your data center, and then the edge just gets the image and to use it without having to enforce policy. And the last is automation and extensibility. Being a good cloud native citizen and being in the CNCF, it was very important for us to be plug and play with existing investments in infrastructure and services uh, that includes Kubernetes, um, and it includes 
a lot of the other things that we're doing in Harbor. So I'll give you some ideas here. We have syslog integration, so it can integrate with many um, logging and analytics tools. We have webhooks, so you can automate and extend Harbor with your CI/CD pipeline. We have a full REST API uh, that basically our UI is based on. And then we have robot accounts that enable you to uh, create accounts that will intera interact in, a, in an automated way with Harbor. This is a high level uh, picture of our architecture. And by the way, I encourage comments if anybody wants to. Uh, I can't see the video, but if anybody talks, I'll, I'll stop. Uh, this is a hardware architecture. The, the most important thing I want to point out here is that it's very modular. Um, we can deploy hardware on Docker. We can deploy hardware on Kubernetes using pods. And you can have a scaled out hardware architecture where you can have uh, geo redundancy and high availability of many of these hardware components, both at the Kubernetes layer as well as at the data access layer that includes our Redis uh, and our Postgres SQL database. So let's start from the left. We have identity providers, ADL, DAP, and YDC, auth. Um, we have in the middle, these are the core services of Harbor. They're highly modular and they're isolated, and each of them have their own tech lead that's responsible for these areas, allowing us to grow both the ecosystem as well as the community in these areas. We have full integration with Chart Museum and Docker Registry and Notary to enable some of our capabilities. Um, and with the next release of hardware, we're going to be adding the support for OCI compliance as well. And obviously, we'll update this diagram. Our data access layer includes our key value storage, uh, local or remote storage. This is where we store the actual artifacts. So if you push an image into Harbor, that's one gigabyte. It will get stored into the storage. And then we have our SQL database for the configuration management that we have. At the top, uh, yeah, go ahead. Question. So for the data layer, is that a key value storage just stuff for just caching or? Yeah, that's caching. Okay. So, mo so all, the all the artifacts are either on the file system or or uh, object storage like uh, S3 or Google Cloud Storage or something. That is correct. So uh, all the images you push go into local or remote storage. You can go to S3, any S3 compatible storage. You can go to persistent volumes on Kubernetes. And then our Redis database, which is our key value store, can be reset, for example, and, and repopulated. And then SQL database contains all of the configuration that you have in Harbor, from the policy to the users to um, uh, to um, to replication uh, attachments to authorization, everything that you need in Harbor goes in there. Mm -hmm. At the top, we have our web portal. Um, you can interact obviously using the Kubelet and Helm uh, because we, we have the clients set up in Harbor as well as the Docker Notary client. And then everything is backed by a full API front ended with Nginx. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where we're going to talk a little bit more in a little bit as well, but to have our scan providers. Uh, initially, and for the longest time, Harbor only supported Claire as a static analysis tool. We found that that wasn't a, a great model and we wanted to expand that. So we actually went down this path where we created a pluggable architecture to enable you to bring your own scanner into Harbor and to be able to leverage both the community and other CNCF projects and, and, and partner companies that are doing a lot of work in the security space. So we started uh, down this path with Aqua and Anchor as the two companies that helped us both define the interfaces, define uh, the work and start building the first scanners. And now we end up, we have multiple scanners. Aqua has 3D and they're also working on CSP. Anchor has engine and enterprise. And then DoSec also has created a scanner. And we're talking to a lot of the other security companies uh, that are CNCF members to bring their own scanners. You can think of like Sysdix, Twistlog, uh, uh, StackRox, all of those folks are, are looking into it. And then the last part is the replicated registry providers that I mentioned in, in the last slide. We allow you to replicate artifacts and assets from Harbor to Docker Distribution, Docker Hub, Huawei, all the public clouds in the US and many other locations. So that's important for being able to plug in Harbor and interoperate with uh, whatever your data is and where your apps are running. 
let's take a look at, at the high level of the project overview. We started Harbor in June 2014 at VMware. So this is a project that's been going on for almost six years now. We donated to CNCF in July 2018, and then we started incubating at CNCF a few months later in November 2018. We have 20 plus product implementations. These are products that are including Harbor either directly or indirectly. Uh, some of them also have enterprise support for Harbor. We have 115 contributing organizations and over 300 community members from a variety of companies around the world. This is our, kind of our money slide for Harbor. Let's, let's walk through this really quickly. We have, uh, so we actually passed 10,000 stars. This was a, a month ago, and we are well over 10,000 stars today. We have 170 contributors with almost 3,000 forks, 14 maintainers, um, five of them are, are non-VMware, the other nine are VMware. So you see a good distribution between VMware and non-VMware maintainers. We have four releases since the CNCF donation. Um, and when I say four releases, I mean four major, major slash minor releases, right? Uh, like just like Kubernetes has four releases a year, that these are releases who have multiple, multiple patches. We have 30,000 downloads for sure that can be accounted for. And the reason why I mentioned this is you don't want to lie to folks. If I go to Git, uh, to Docker Hub and I look at our container images, there are like a million plus downloads on each one of them. But a lot of those are CICD pipelines. A lot of those are different things. So there is absolutely no way for us to know for sure how many end users have downloaded Harbor, but we have 100% certainty that have been 30,000 downloads uh, based on some metrics that we had on our Google Analytics. Do you have some metrics on actual usage, like uh, some? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So we have 700 plus Slack members, 12,000 Slack messages that are tracked that basically have not expired, uh, over 1,200 Twitter followers, 8,000 plus commits, six blogs, three webinars, uh, almost 5,000 PRs, 95 contributing companies uh, to just the core hub, right? Not the outside projects as well. Uh, 71,000 GitHub views and 13,000 GitHub unique visitors. So, and as you can see on the graphs here, the activity on Harbor, the hourly activity has kind of stayed steady over the years and increases whenever we have releases, but this project is well-funded, it is well-maintained, we have a very active community that is still contributing heavily on Harbor. And if you see the chart of contributing companies and developers, you can see that it has a schedule, steady and gradual increase over the years. Yeah. Uh uh, sorry, yes. sorry, one question. Uh, one question about the maintainer. How many, uh, uh, how many maintainers are from different company? Five. Five. Uh, any, you know, uh, any more detailed about this five company? For example, uh, how many maintainer from company A, from company B? Yeah, so Aqua has, I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, as well. So if we go to uh, we have uh, today we have 40 maintainers. Um, oh, what happened here? Sorry about that. I guess GitHub decided to. Oh, they, they expired my password. Oh. All right. Okay. No uh, mind. Uh, uh, it's. It, it, yeah. It, it, it's uh, going to be quick, so you yeah. Can, uh, uh, you can send this information later. Uh, that's fine. Well, it's, it's in the due diligence document. Okay. So okay, the, that's great. the due diligence co com, uh, document has him, but I'll, I'll show you the maintainers, right? Uh, I just want to show it to you so you can uh, see it as well. Okay. Um, but uh, we have Ag Daniel from Agua Security. Um, we have uh, um, uh, Nathan Lowe from uh, from Highland. We have Di Chen, who's independent. He works for a company, but we couldn't update his company name for security reasons. Um, we have Fan Jan Kong from Kihu. Uh, we have Ming Ming from NetEase. So, so these are this is our maintainers list, and the due diligence document talks about it as well. So it's nine folks from VMware, five independent. Okay, that's great. I guess I need to update my GitHub password very soon. So 
Um, moving on uh, down the path around extensibility, I mentioned this earlier. We underwent that effort with Aqua and Anchor to design this extensible plugin interface in hardware. The first plan for this plugin interface is to enable just scanning of artifacts, right? The static analysis, just like what Claire did. So you have some images in hardware, you create an asynchronous job, you talk to a pluggable scanner like Claire or Anchor or Aqua, they do the scanning and they return some results, which are in turn displayed into hardware, and then policy can be enforced on top of it. Policy like don't allow any developer to pull an image that has vulnerabilities of high status in them. That's a very simple policy. Now, in the future, we want to use this extensible interface to do more things like, for example, license enforcement, license check, uh, inventory of assets. So you can see where we're going with this. We're going to add a lot more things into Harbor, but we're starting with just scanning for static analysis. The interface is fairly simple. And uh, we actually have one company called DUSEC that did not talk to us at all. They went through the documentation on the interface. They looked at what Anchor and Agua did, and they implemented their own scanner. And one day they just show up at our community meeting and said, hey, we have a scanner too. And it was awesome. But these are the uh, scanners that we have today. Um, when we look at the roadmap from Harbor, we're, we're very aggressive. We want to basically do a lot of things into Harbor. We have a well-defined roadmap that takes us uh, over a year ahead. Um, that's also documented in our, in our uh, we have a project board that talks about the current release, our backlog. So this roadmap is, is defined in there. From a management aspect, you know, we're starting to build a Kubernetes operator. And actually one of our uh, contributing companies called OVH has uh, created the first release of the operator and we're actually undergoing review right now and expanding it and gonna add features so we can make it publicly available for everybody. We wanna actually do signing policy replication. So that's a limitation in notary and we're working with the community to actually enable that. Um, metadata management, perfect scale, we're always gonna continue improving that. And then we wanna add more and more things around observability. From an image distribution, uh, we want to actually enable users to put image on the edge in a much more efficient way. So we're looking into proxy caching capabilities as well as P2P distribution. And for P2P, we're actually working with Kraken and Dragonfly, uh, more, more with Dragonfly right now, but Kraken in the future as well, to enable the P2P distribution in Harbor. Uh, proxy cache, by the way, we actually have it working, but it will not be in our next release. It will be in probably the release after that, but we, we were able to get proxy caching capabilities in Harbor already. On the extensibility. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so, yeah, so question on, on the image distribution. So, uh, so once you distribute that image, uh, uh, are you gonna, are you, do you have plans to scan that image uh, at the edge or, or it just, is it just gonna be um, you know, scanning in a central location and then distributing that afterwards? Yeah, it will, prob it will probably be scanned at central location. And then for the P2P distribution, the way, one way that we could do it is we can replicate that image after it has been scanned and policies enforced to the hub or the core of the P2P. And then P2P will distribute it wherever you have nodes and agents, depending on how you had set up your P2P distribution. But the resulting image, all we'll have to enforce is that it's the same image as the one that was in Harbor, because it was already scanned. A P2P software usually cannot enforce policy. So that, that uh, means that you need to maybe have a signing mechanism at the edge? Yeah, uh, that, that's why we need this signing policy replication so we can actually persist the signing on the P2P. Okay. On the extensibility front, we already have webhooks and we improve and add more webhooks with every release of Harbor. We wanna continue down that path, we're not gonna stop. As we add new features, we're also adding webhooks for those features. Uh, the interrogation service is kind of the next generation of that pluggable scanner I mentioned earlier. Being able to interrogate images and understand everything from license to usage of libraries to the ability to do inventory management and more things down the line as well. And then on the cloud native artifact management and OCI initiative, we're trying uh, it's one of the big features of our Harbor 2.0 release that will ship next month. And that's around bringing OCI capabilities into Harbor. So now you can actually store in Harbor, not just images and home charts, but Cina bundles, OPAs, 
um, anything that's OCI compliant. And we're actually working on creating a list for our end users to consume that indicates which file types are OCI compliant today and which of them may be in the future. So I wanna uh, talk a little bit about, we have a couple of uh, customer uh, testimonials here. Uh, when, I, when I met with uh, the CNCF uh, TOC, I brought uh, one of our maintainers, Nathan Lowe, to talk about it. You can, the uh, conversation is recorded. And basically what Nathan said is, my company is using Harbor in production at a very high level. It's an important tool for us. And it was so important that I started coding into Harbor and he was actually promoted to maintainer as well. So he became an active contributor into Harbor. But at Highland Software, they have uh, almost 2,500 tags, 670 plus container images, 2.7 terabytes of storage, 175 Harbor projects, and over a thousand active developers consuming Harbor. So being used in production. Another one of our customers, um, uh, it's a leading payment systems solutions provider has a geo-distributed Harbor instances, both in Austin and Plano, where they actually build images and push them into Harbor and use Harbor replication to keep the two instances in sync so their applications can seamlessly move from one Kubernetes cluster to the other. This works beautifully and they have a fairly sizable Harbor installation as well. I wanna actually stop here for just a second because I wanna show you guys one more thing here. So if we go here uh, under our community, we'll have a pinned issue that we'll ask the community to come and tell us, hey, how do you use Harbor? And as we meet more and more folks, we ask them to tell us how they're using Harbor. I wanna show you guys very quickly three testimonials. The first one is from Ulesoft, where they've been using Harbor for a while now. They have 5.5 terabytes on Harbor, with 17 million pool operations and over a thousand unique images and 300 home charts, a critical part of their infrastructure. Another company, uh, Agoda, um, they're like a booking holding company. They have 8,000 tags in 1141 repositories and they have 28 terabytes of storage consumed in Harbor. And one other company, uh, where is it here? All right, I guess I can't find it here. There's one more company that had a significant sizable uh, environment uh, in Harbor as well. So every time we go to a conference, every time we have a meetup, we're finding more and more customers that are using Harbor at really, really high scale in production. So all of those tools that the community is happy, they're, they're using it, and sometimes we just don't get to know about them. Now, from a graduation criteria, we have the TOCPR, we have the project statistics that you can see on CNCF uh, to dev stats, and uh, we have over 25 plus listed in the adopters file. These are independent end users of sufficient scale and quality that are using Harbor in production. We have the testimonials uh, link that I just showed you earlier, and um, we are having multiple uh, products that offer critical and enterprise support on Harbor. Uh, the three that VMware has is Enterprise PKS, Essential PKS, and Vic. We have 40 maintainers with a healthy distribution of technical ownership across six entities. And we actually, in the due diligence document, we have a breakdown of who's the technical lead of what area. Uh, that's actually also part of our maintainers document. So if you go back to, uh, to our maintainers document, one of the things that we have here is a list of who's technical owner for what area. So for example, for webhooks, you have Ming Ming Pei. Um, and for the policy engine, you have Nathan Lowe. For security, you have Dan Daniel Passa. So every single person from our maintainers is responsible for one critical area of Harbor. Again, lots of contributions, lots of authors, lots of committers. And we have demonstrated a substantial ongoing flow of commits and merge contributions over the last multiple years. And we have a new release approximately every three months. And that's it. Questions?
Uh, no, I don't have any questions. I mean, it looks pretty solid to me. So uh, I think uh, um, I think next steps will be to just uh, evaluate uh, the due diligence, look at the due diligence, and uh, uh, go through the checklist. That that'd be great. Is there? Do you think that a timeline? I mean, we've been on the queue right now for many many months. Um, and with Cubicon coming very close, uh, really, I mean, it's a good opportunity for us to make a splash in the community. Um, and to be a, you know, a graduate project, yeah, yeah, project, uh, so. I, yeah. I'm hoping before, uh, before uh, maybe within the next month or something. So Cubicon is in March, right? So end of March, yeah, end of March. So hopefully before, yeah, uh, within the next month or a couple of weeks. So. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then later we'll have to go to the TOC for for a vote. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, but, uh, that, that's uh, our goal. Like the TOC might say yes or no, but at, at least the due diligence yeah. that we know everything is in good standing. We want to get it out of the way either with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Or, or yeah. Answer. And yeah. And, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll look at try to get this as soon as possible because uh, but it still needs to be looked at by, I think, six storage, and uh, there's another six uh, storage. Yeah, well, they, they were saying that if, if you've, I mean, the due diligence doesn't need to be done three times, is what Amy told me. Uh, Quinton asked, let's do six storage, six runtime, and like, but Amy said, we don't need to go through every SIG. This will never finish. Okay. Uh, like okay one okay. SIG will take point. Like, for example, you don't need three SIGs to make sure that we have good architecture or that we have. Uh, a good maintainer diversity or that you have good contributions over the last year. One SIG does it, it's, it's enough. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Sounds great. Any, anybody else has any other questions? Okay. All right, thank, thank you all. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Michael. So I think uh, we have another presentation. We have an, uh, about 26 minutes left. So, Klaus, do you, okay. you want to go through your presentation? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can I see my screen? Yes. Okay, that's great. Uh, uh, I'd, I would like to uh, uh, give an introduction about Volcano. And we would like to you know, donate Volcano at the sandbox into CNCF. And uh, this is Klaus, and uh, uh, I think uh, Kevin Kevin Wang also on the line. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, uh, give some background about the volcano. You know, uh, for now more and more users would like to run uh, batch workload in the on the Kubernetes batch workload such as uh, AI, machine learning, big data, and uh, in the uh, since I have a research user group, there are also several people who like to run uh, some HPC workload on the Kubernetes. But uh, when we try to run this kind of uh, workload, we found some, you know, uh, we found some some gaps or some requirements to the Kubernetes. Now the first one is the scheduling about uh, gun scheduling, fair sharing, something like that. Yeah, and uh, the other one is a uh, queue, uh, job queue management, uh, such as uh, index jobs, multiple uh, multiple pod templates. And uh, the, uh, because the big data AI also, you know, uh, handling data, so data management is also important. Uh, maybe, and some others such as uh, accelerator. So, so, Based on this one, we would like to do some enhancement to the based on the Kubernetes, and in the, you know, in the uh, in the last year, the Kubernetes size we are uh, Kubernetes is in the Kubecom is that Kubernetes is a platform for the other platform. So we would like to uh, have a, you know, batch platform for the uh, for this for all this workload. So this is uh, our. Motivation about uh, volcano this part. 
yeah. Uh, this is the uh, overall of uh, Volcano. Volcano is a Kubernetes native batch system. We based on the uh, CRD operator and the multiple scatterer to support different workload. Now the, uh, for the cool flow Spark and uh, uh, HPC workload, this uh, we call this one as a domain framework. They focus on the you know big data AI and HPC error. But all of this uh, uh, workload have a similar requirement, such as a uh, batch scheduling, uh, enhancement job, uh, alternate queue management, and another one is a uh, data management and uh, uh, accelerator support, such as GPU. So we would like to have a platform for for this uh, for uh, for those workload, AI, big data, and HPC. So this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the volcano we would like to build. Uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, some history about the uh, volcano. Volcano we use we use it to have a cube app teacher, an incubator project of uh, in the Kubernetes to uh, to bring batch capability into Kubernetes, and later we uh, rename it to cube batch and only focus on the scheduling part. But uh, in the um, but later we found that uh, uh, batch scheduling is not enough for uh, for HPC and for AI, uh, even for the big data. The only the scheduler is not enough because so we ha we uh, we also have some such as queue management, data management, and uh, uh, some enhancement to the accelerator such as device plugin. So in the last year. Uh, we open source, we, we build Volcano and open source is uh, at the early of last year. So in the next stage, we would like to uh, to make it as a CNCF sandbox. Uh, we have a GitHub here and we have Slack and we also use, have a Google group there. Uh, uh, you know, we, we also have a logo here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the volcano uh, current status of uh, current community status of volcano. Now we uh, open a, a sandbox request here in the uh, CNCF TOC, and uh, we have uh, more than se uh, seven hundred uh, GitHub stars, and we have seventy more than seventy contributors from Huawei, AWS. Uh, JD.com, OpenAI, and Tencent. We have uh, three formal releases for now, and uh, uh, we are going to uh, to have what uh, uh, we plan to have uh, one release every uh, every three months. Uh, for now, we have five maintainers across the three independent company. Uh, we have three maintainer from Huawei, one uh, one maintainer from IBM, and uh, Another maintainer from the Tencent. We have a uh, 12 public adopter uh, for now. Uh, uh, we didn't include some, you know, we, we, we have some uh, offline discussion with different uh, uh, different people. They already use this uh, volcano in their uh, in their production environment, but they didn't uh, publish this, this yet. Uh, the license is uh, Apache 2. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, major features of Volcano. We have a, uh, we have a, a queue job management for the uh, for the batch workload. So, and we also have some command line to have a user have a user to management workload. And it's also have some similar interface to the HPC user. Such as we sub, we uh, we stop, something like that. Another important com important feature is uh, the scheduling part. We have uh, cost scheduling for HPC and uh, AI training. We have uh, uh, fair share scheduling between job queue and between namespace cross queue for uh, for you know for the batch workload and for uh, for the multi tenants uh, user case. We also support predicts and prioritize 
uh, for uh, to schedule the poll. And we also have job level priority and a job level uh, preemption for uh, for the workload. Uh, this is the OR architecture of uh, Volcano. Uh, the green, the green part is the belong is our uh, belong to the Volcano. The the blue part is uh, the Kubernetes components. Uh, we introduced uh, two CRD here. Now, the first one is a job. Another one is a queue to run batch workload. And uh, we introduced uh, uh, a controller or controller to manage the life cycle of job and the uh, life cycle of queue. And uh, we, have, uh, 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 we have a batch scheduler to, you know, to provide necessary uh, scheduling policy, such as a uh, uh, scheduling fair share, something like that. We also have some device plugin to uh, report uh, uh, device information, such as a top logic and uh, uh, something, uh, some information, and uh, we, uh, and in our plan, we are going to do some integration with the Singularity, another, uh, another container runtime in the HPC era. Uh, we also provide a uh, command lines, which which will have uh, have user to manage the life cycle of job, and uh, it will also provide. Uh, uh, the similar interface to the HPC user. Yeah. Uh, for now, we did several integration with uh, uh, other community. Uh, for for example, we integrate with the Kubeflow. Uh, we integrate the TF operator of Kubeflow community. It's uh, it's uh, uh, it will do leverage gun scheduling in the volcano for their uh, TensorFlow training job. And uh, we also integrate with the Kubeflow Arena. Uh, it will help to manage the job. We already integrate with the Spark operator. Yes, help to do the scheduling for the Spark part. Uh, we also have uh, integrate with the Cromwell, another, um, another software in HPC error. Uh, uh, and we also have uh, integrated with the Pedal Pedal, another uh, uh, machine learning framework. All, all of this is, uh, you know, integrated with the other community and uh, get the document and uh, get uh, the code merged in, in those community file. Uh, this is a short list of our adoption. Uh, we have uh, uh, in Huawei Cloud, it's uh, put it. Uh, we put the volcano into the production, and in the, for example, in in uh, it's um, uh, it's evaluate volcano for their spark on on, uh, on Kubernetes environment, and uh, in the other uh, in the in our link, we have you know we have twelve adopter there. They both of them. All of them are running AI and uh, big data for their uh, for their uh, for their environment. Uh, for our roadmap, for now, we would like to uh, uh, to support more feature about the uh, resource management and the resource scheduling for the batch workload, such as uh, a hierarchical queue, plugin procure, something like that. And for the ecosystem, we are going to integrate with uh, Flink, another, you know, another big data framework, which is uh, also uh, popular right recently. And we are also going to do more enhancement for uh, uh, to and uh, integrate with the Kubernetes device plugin for the uh, for the accelerator, such as the GPU. And we are also going to integrate with uh, uh, Alexio. Uh, 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 cache or uh, data cache uh, for the big data. So we we, we will provide such as a data warehouse scheduling and a data locality in uh, feature to work with, work with them. Uh, we would like to uh, for the Kubernetes uh, for the CNCF. I think uh, uh, Volcano will have 
uh, the domain framework such as big data and AI to adopt cloud native project, uh, especially the Kubernetes, because uh, you know more and more people would like to run uh, such kind of workload on Kubernetes. And uh, for the volcano, we would like to, you know, we would like to have a neutral home for volcano project, so we can have more contributor and more. We will have uh, more contributor here. Yeah. Uh, this is all. Uh, this is the overall introduction for the uh, for the Kubernetes. Uh, for the uh, sorry for the volcano. So any question here? I I don't have any specific questions. Uh, I think it's great. I, I mean. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in integration with Flink too, because I used to work with Flink. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it, it looks great. So I think uh, next steps will be, I think there needs to be a quorum on, you know, the whether to send this to, as a recommendation to the TOC for Sandbox. Well, yeah. Obviously, it's, Sandbox, uh, it's, it's the requirements are, are, are not as high as a graduation, right? So. So it's more like, a, you know, I think uh, we have uh, three chairs now. So um, so for me, it's, it's an okay. So we have to get an okay from, uh, from another chair. So the presentation is recorded, right? So um, I'll send it over to Quentin and Diane. I don't know if Quentin will be able to answer, but I'll send it over to Diane. And, and, okay. and from there, uh, you know, we, we can send it over to the TOC for, for a vote. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Anybody else has any other questions? Okay, so Sorry, we can't hear you anymore. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Thanks, thanks. Uh, so I was, but, uh, so uh, yeah, I was just saying, uh, so um, the um, next week we'll have a presentation on that, and and then so from Tom, I think Tom, Tom, you're on the on the line, right? Yes, but it will be Jeff who will be presenting. I'm just here to listen if uh, we're good to go or if you're expecting anything from us before the meeting. No, no, nothing. So, so uh, hopefully we have another chair in the meeting so we can actually decide to vote and give it a uh, to send it to uh, the TOC for a vote, you know, after the presentation. You know, assuming everything is okay. And um, yeah, and as far as uh, the, the other item on the agenda is, uh, you know, we already have a new co-chair, so we, we, have four, we have three. And then for tech lead, so there's two, we still have two spots, uh, but there's two people interested. So, uh, so maybe, um, you know, how the voting works, uh, uh, we're gonna, uh, you know, just, uh, have a vote in the, with, with the co-chairs and then, uh, and then send it over to the TOC to approve this new tech lead. So this will help us uh, uh, have more people and more mass, critical mass to, uh, you know, help out the community. And yeah, that's it. That's all that we have for the for today. So any any other items that you guys want to talk about?
Hello? Okay, so I think I'm still not in. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, you're, not, you're not on mute. Yeah, no, no, no topics for me. So we can hear you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.